Good morning. morning. Welcome to Asbury, where we worship, grow, and serve. We are so glad you are here. Uh, This service is live streamed, so we want to welcome those of you who are viewing remotely, as well as our folks who are here in person. Uh, We as United Methodists invite everyone to take part in Holy Communion, so this is Communion Sunday. And after the liturgy, we encourage folks uh, who are able to, to come forward down the center aisle to receive Communion. And when the ushers indicate it's your time to come forward, if you cannot come forward, then let the ushers know and we will bring the elements to you. And just so you know, if anybody needs gluten-free elements, we have those available. Just let your server know and they will make that available to you. Um, This is Holy Humor Sunday. Uh, so there will be a time to share jokes with the congregation during the during the service. I hope everyone has a, a noisemaker. If you don't have a noisemaker, then, uh, yeah. Um, you may want to get up and get one out of the basket over there. So you, you too will have a noisemaker. Um, anyway, and so speaking of uh, Holy Humor Sunday, uh, April, let's see, it's going to be April 28th. We're going to have Undie Sunday. In which, uh, so between now and then, we will be collecting underwear. Uh, this is for our laundry and shower neighbors. Um, we're looking for donations of men's boxer briefs, so not the tidy whities but the, uh, the, the other kind, the close-fitting boxers, and uh, in medium, large, and extra large sizes, and ladies' underwear in sizes five through nine. And also, um, disposable razors and deodorant are appreciated as well. Um, want to let you know that Joy Group is meeting this Thursday, so please sign up by noon tomorrow. And the speaker is Kathy Sicker, and the topic is why exercise. And that uh, 
so they have um, time to uh, fellowship time from 11:30 to 12, lunch at 12, and then the program at 12:30. We're having Messy Church again, so that will be our um, Friday uh, meal and worship happening on April 19th. Um, service and activities will be from 6.30 to 7.30, and the theme is Earth Day, so there may be earth and dirt involved in this, but it should be a lot of, a lot of fun, so we invite you to that. Um, our communion offering for the month of April is the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. And the food item that we're collecting is canned tuna or canned meat. So we hope uh, you'll donate a can of that. It is appreciated. Having said all of those things, if you are a guest, if this is your first time here at Asbury with us, we extend a special welcome to you this morning, morning and we encourage you to fill out the visitor side of the pew pad. And when you do that, we will give 15 meals in your honor to rise against hunger. And now let us greet one another with signs of peace.
Please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing of God's glorious name. In the earth, we worship the Lord. Sing praises to our Creator. Let us rejoice in the great things God has done for us. Bless our Lord, bless our praise. For the Lord has freed us from sin and conquered death. Join me in prayer. Wondrous and generous God, from the four corners of the earth, chorus of praise arose. The ocean roars and the trees shout their joy. From the deepest depths of the earth being, we serve the words of adoration. So we celebrate resurrection joy. In the dawn of Easter morning, death has vanquished, and we have received the victory through Jesus Christ. We have filled with wonder and marvel of your tender care. You set a table before us and invite us to be fed. You send your spirit to accompany the words of Scripture, and your words become a source of life. May we always share our joy with the world. Amen. Let's sing hymn 302, Christ the Lord is risen today. Verses 1, 2, and 5. So I just want you to know that these jokes were pre-tested on the 8.30 service. <laughs> and, and they have been, uh, yes, as appropriate, we have adjusted a little bit here. Um, <laughs> that's right, it is quality control. Um, so, so this is Holy Humor Sunday. So I'm going to begin with a, a knock-knock joke. So knock-knock. Who's there? Noble. No bell, so I knocked. <laughs> Why did the mom send her son three socks while he was at army boot camp? Why? He wrote to her and told her he grew a foot while he was there. What do you call a dog that can do magic? 
a labracadabrador. All right, this will be my last one, and then we'll hand it on to, uh, to Mr. Kevin. I spent a lot of time and money and effort child-proofing my house, but the kids still get in. While you're coming down here to have a seat, uh, I just want you to know that the word divine means something to do with God. It always means something to do with God. Did you know that Jesus is divine? And we are the branches. People kept asking Mary, what kind of gifts did people give to Jesus when he was born? And I think Mary finally kind of got a little bit fed up with the question after a while, because one day she answered, well, you know, the stuff that they usually give to kings, things like uh, gold, frankincense, need I say myrrh? <laughs> now, I know some of you have jokes that you were ready to tell. Come on up, Essie. How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. Uh, I thought there was 25. I, I don't know why. <laughs> Elise? What's a tree's favorite drink? What? Root beer. Yeah. All right, great. Very nice. So now we're going to play a little game of win, lose, or draw. I'm going to show you something I drew, and you can call out what you think it is as it comes. Here it is. If you think you know what it is. Person. <laughs> okay, I keep, I keep hearing person. It's not a person. Not a person. Good guess, but nope. Not a person. Sorry, it goes out of the frame a little bit, but it's just a, a little arch there. <laughs> and another little arch. Another little arch. Okay. Oh, I think Thea, Thea's getting it. It's a dog. It's a dog. You're right, my God, goodness, very good, very good. Watch, okay, here come the eyeballs now. All right, well, while that's finishing up, it is, it's a puppy dog. But when it first started, when I first started to draw, you couldn't tell that, could you? You thought it was a person, a lot of you people thought, didn't you? Because you didn't have enough information. You just saw part of the drawing, not the whole drawing. Well, something like that happened after Jesus rose from the dead. People did not understand what was happening. So people uh, like Mary... Were, were in the garden. She didn't understand what was going on. The two that were on their way to Emmaus, they didn't understand what was going on. Peter didn't understand when he looked into the tomb and saw the cloth in there because they didn't know enough. We're really blessed because we know the whole story. We can see the whole picture of what happened in the Gospels and what happened in the New Testament. And we know that Jesus rose to never die again. And because we trust in him, we too will live with him forever. Let's bow our heads and talk to him. God, we thank you for showing us the whole picture. And now we understand and can celebrate and can laugh and have a wonderful day like this. In your name we pray. Amen. Today, Children's Church is going to be upstairs, so we'll head on up, okay? One thing I didn't do is um, is that I did not, I know some of you have, have saved up jokes for today, and so we want to give you a chance, uh, if there's anyone who would like to share a joke with us this morning, um, we'd like to give you that opportunity right now. <laughs> We have, we have one. Okay. Uh, we, we've got the microphone right down here. Oh.
I do this every Wednesday that I'm in charge at coffee hour, so I had a number and I chose one of the short ones. On the billboard of the Church of the Cross, a United Methodist Church, it read, don't let worries kill you, let the church help you. <laughs> Anyone else? What? A uh, Roman Catholic. <laughs> a magician was driving down the street and then he turned into a driveway. <laughs> oh, we want the we want the people viewing at home to hear. This is a very old one. There was a man who sat in the front row of the church every week <laughs> and fell asleep. Slept through the whole sermon every week. The minister eventually, after several months, became very upset about this. So one day in the middle of the sermon, she says, very quietly, now everybody who wants to go to heaven, please stand up. And everybody stood up except the man in the front row. Then she says, sit down. Now she said, now everybody who wants to go to hell, stand up! Up, man, jump, stand up. <laughs> and looks around and says, well, pastor, I don't know what we're voting on, but it looks like you and me are the only two in favor of it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. There'll be another opportunity. Oh, do you have one? Wait, I got one too, but this is no offense to Tom. Uh, how can you tell who the trombonist kid is on the playground? How? Oh. They can't swing and they don't know how to use the slide. Join me in the prayer for illumination. God of grace, grace, with joy, joy we recall the risen Christ, who left the tomb behind and appeared, and appeared to, to his followers. Delight us with your word today and teach us to set aside human wisdom so we might embrace the message of the cross, which the world calls weak and foolish. We, we give thanks that, that the cross of Christ, Christ is wisdom, wisdom to, to us, us who are being, being saved. saved. Amen. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning is from Genesis, chapter 18, 1 to 15. Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses. That's Genesis, not Exodus. Oh. Okay, guess what I have practiced this week? <laughs> Exodus, and I wondered because it didn't seem to follow really Easter Sunday. So, going back to the drawing board, you will hear it when I do. Oh, that let there not be so many long words. I did. I practiced several times. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Oh. What can I tell you? Best laid plans. Okay, here we go. Genesis chapter 18, 1 to 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran away from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. 
Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and sat it before them, and then he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we have heard your words, and as we consider, as we consider the laughter of Sarah, Lord, help us also to celebrate the joy that comes with new life. Lord, be with us in our meditations. Be with us as we rejoice in the new life we receive through Christ. In his name I pray. Amen. So uh, a young couple had their first child, and they were still getting used to the new routines of of having an infant, a newborn in the house. And so the first time that the mother left uh, her husband alone to go to the grocery store, left uh, him alone with the baby, as soon as she got out the door, the baby started to cry. And the father did everything he could think of to do but the baby wouldn't stop crying and finally he got so worried he decided to take the infant to the doctor and after the doctor listened to the father tell all that he had done to get the baby to stop crying the doctor began to examine the baby the baby's ears and its chest and then down to the diaper area and when he undid the diaper he found that the diaper was full and he said here's the problem the doctor said he needs a change And the father was very perplexed. He said, but the diaper package says it's good for up to 10 pounds. Being a new parent has a learning curve, and I think about that as I think of Sarah, and it's amazing that she didn't faint dead away in the tent listening to these visitors that came to see Abraham and her. After all, she was around 90 years old at the time, 90 years old, and yet God had made that crazy promise that she and Abraham would have a multitude of descendants. And so she laughed at the thought of God fulfilling the promise after all of these years that their offspring would would become a multitude. And so maybe she's laughing at, at that promise that's finally going to happen. Maybe she's laughing at the idea of chasing after a little one at her age or the idea of Abraham trying at his hand at changing a diaper or two at his age. But as we learn, nothing is too wonderful for God. Now, there is humor in the Bible. A, a lot of it is is puns, so we don't always they don't always get it into the translation, but there are interesting things like um, the, the, 
the people sending golden hemorrhoids to um, to the Philistines. It's it's in there. Um, so what? <laughs> so there are images that provoke smiles as we hear them, um, and and I think God has a sense of humor. And Isaac's name means laughter. And what child of God is not a delight? Is not giving us uh, laughter and glee. But Isaac's arrival, the arrival of laughter comes only after God insists on stretching our sense of belief and the sense of faith that Abraham and Sarah had. But they were faithful throughout their lives. Now, think of the inner dialogue that Sarah might be having because she isn't a spring chicken. This woman has traveled 90 times completely around the sun. I mean, she has taken... Yes, a lot of, she's gone quite a, she has a few miles on her, let's put it that way. Anyway, listening to her crack, cackling away in the tent, um, it's, it seems like, you know, well, it's good news, but she also seems kind of embarrassed that she laughed at it. Um, and, you know, there's this dialogue between her and one of the visitors, one of the angels, and, uh, she says, you know, she, she laughs and then she denies it. We hear how God says to her, hey, or, or the visitors, hey, you did too laugh. And the laugh is on you for it's true. You're going to have a baby just as I always said you would, even if it's a little late in life. And look at it this way. People wonder if there's life after kids, but in your case, at least there was life before kids. And we hear this very limited debate between Sarah and God's emissary. You laughed. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. And so on and so forth. This kind of debate, um, yeah, we don't, uh, we, we do hear conversations and debates with uh, with God and God's emissaries, but this reminds me of another debate I read about, allegedly from long, long ago. And it seems that the Pope was under pressure from all the cardinals to expel the Jews from Rome. And naturally, there was a big uproar from the Jewish community. So the Pope made a deal. He would have a religious debate with a member of the Jewish community. And if the Jewish debater won, then the Jews could stay. And if the Pope won, the Jews would have to leave. So the Jews realized they had no choice. And the elders of the community picked a respected rabbi to represent them. And the rabbi was rather flamboyant in his speech. And so they asked for one addition to the debate. They made To make it more interesting and safer, they said... Um, let's let neither side actually speak. And the Pope agreed. So the day of the great debate came, and the rabbi is sitting on one side, and the Pope is on the other side, and for a full minute they stared at each other. And finally, the Pope raised his hand and showed three fingers. The rabbi looked at him and raised one finger. The Pope waved his fingers in a circle around his head. And the rabbi energetically pointed to the ground. The Pope pulled out a loaf of bread and a glass of wine, and he broke the bread and ate, and then he sipped the wine. And the rabbi pulled out an apple and took a bite from it. And the Pope then stood up and said, I give up. This man is too good. The Jews can stay in Rome as long as they want. So not long afterwards, all the cardinals came crowding around the Pope and said, what, what was all that about? And the Pope said, well, first I held up three fingers to represent the Trinity. And he responded by holding up one finger to remind me that there was still one God common to both our religions. Then I waved my fingers around me, showing that God was all around us. And he held up one finger, pointed to the ground, and reminded me that God may be all around, but God is also right here with us. And so I broke bread and drank wine to show how God absolves us from our sins. And then the rabbi ate of the apple to remind me of original sin and how it still affects us. He had an answer for everything. What could I do? Meanwhile, the Jewish community is crowding around the rabbi. What happened, they asked. Well, said the rabbi, first he said to me that the Jews had three days to get out of here. And I told him that not one of us was leaving, not one. Then he told me that the whole city would be cleared of Jews. I let him know that we're staying right here. And then, asked the woman, I don't know, said the rabbi. He took out his lunch, I took out mine. 
And now we can stay as long as we want. <laughs> well, in chapter 21 of Genesis, Sarah gives birth to Isaac, and Sarah says, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew, and Abraham made a great feast. There's rejoicing over this new life born to Abraham and Sarah. And we still, we rejoice in new life, in each child born. That's what we do. And what is Easter if not a celebration of new life? Now, this tradition of rejoicing on uh, the Sunday after Easter is, is actually connected to a very ancient custom. Um, there were uh, early church theologians like Augustine and Gregory of Nyssa and John Chrysostom, and, um, and they, uh, in their writings, they said that God played a practical joke on the devil by raising Jesus from the dead. And they called that the Easter laugh. And so um, back in a long time ago, um, the Easter celebration wasn't just one day. It was a week-long celebration. It was so such a glorious thing. And I, I suspect people had more leisure time back then. Um, things weren't so rushed, but so they would they would celebrate for a week and the day after Easter on Easter Monday they would um, have picnics and they would play practical jokes on one another and they would throw water at each other oh, we're not doing that one by the way um, and and so they called that so that was Easter Monday and then um, in 1988 there was a group of people uh, who called them the called themselves the Fellowship of Merry Christians, and they began encouraging churches and prayer groups to resurrect this uh, Bright Monday, is what it was called, only they called it Holy Humor, uh, Holy Humor, and, and they started trying to encourage people to do it on Monday, but all the pastors were too tired on the Monday after Easter, so they changed it to the Sunday after Easter, and so that's where Holy Humor uh Holy Humor Sunday comes from. And the theme of it is Jesus is the life of the party. Well, one day, Groucho Marx was getting off an elevator and he happened to meet a clergyman. And the clergyman came up to him and put out his hand and said, I want to thank you for all the joy you've put into the world. And Groucho shook his hand and replied, thank you, Reverend. I want to thank you for all the joy you've taken back out of it. Um, but we don't... We don't want to be those people, right? We, we want to experience the joy, the joy of new life. We want to celebrate the joy that comes from knowing that God has defeated death and Jesus has been resurrected from the tomb. That is the good news. So as we, as we celebrate this Sunday, um, we remember that Jesus had a way of turning things upside down. He had a way of upsetting the Pharisees and the high priest. He, he healed people on the Sabbath and he told stories about idlers who were given full pay, about stewards who were successful cheats and debauched sons being celebrated upon returning home. But eternity had the last laugh after all. Here are Caiaphas and all his crowd, Pilate and Herod and all theirs, and they're sitting complacently in a state of grave and dignified self-congratulations. They have stopped all the nonsense, or so they think. They have done their duty and justified their authority that has been vested in them by efficiently disposing of disposing once and for all for, of a dangerous man. He is safely dead. And with solemn calm again restored, they can concentrate what's more on really serious matters. But this time, the dead will not stay dead. Jesus returns. If that isn't funny, nothing is. The resurrection is the supreme, the final, the ultimate practical joke. And since laughter, although not irresistible, is nonetheless highly contagious, let us laugh with the rest of creation because the, the kingdom of God has drawn near. And what could be better than that? So let us celebrate the good news. Amen.
And now, let us stand as we're able, and we're going to sing Oil in My Lamp. remain standing as we prepare to sing the doxology and receive the morning offering. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you have blessed us with. Give us the power to use it well. Lord, help us to claim gifts like joy and laughter as well. And so as we, we your people, are gathered together, when we go forth, may we serve the world with joy. Amen.
So this is our second joy break. Um, so a, uh, a pastor assured his congregation that he was their servant and they should feel free to call him any time they had a problem. And that night the pastor's phone rang at 3 a.m. And on the other end was a dear elderly lady who said, Pastor, I can't sleep. And he said, I'm so sorry to hear that, but what can I do about it? And the pastor uh, listened for the response and she sweetly replied, Preach to me a while, Pastor. So, uh, I might wake up and go running. I also might wake up and win the lottery. The odds are about the same. (laughs) So a police officer pulls a guy over for speeding, and they had the following exchange. The officer says, may I see your driver's license? And the driver says, I don't have one. I had it suspended when I got my fifth DUI. And the officer said, may I see the owner's card for the vehicle? And the driver says, it's not my car. I stole it. And the car is stolen? That's right. But come to think of it, I think I saw the owner's card in the glove box when I was putting my gun in there. (laughs) There's a gun in the glove box? Yes, sir, that's where I put it after I shot and killed the woman who owns the car and I stuffed her in the trunk. There's a body in the trunk? Yes, sir. Hearing this, the officer immediately called his captain and the car was quickly surrounded by more police cars and the captain approached the driver to handle this tense situation. Captain says, sir, can I see your license? Sure, here it is. License was valid. Whose car is this? It's mine, officer. Here's the registration. Could you slowly open your glove box so I can see if there's a gun in it? Yes, sir, but there's no gun in it. And sure enough, there was nothing in the glove box. Captain says, would you mind opening your trunk? I was told that you said there's a body in it. No problem. The trunk was open, no body. Captain says, I don't understand it. The officer who stopped you said you told him you didn't have a license, that you stole the car, that you had a gun in the glove box, and that there was a dead body in the trunk. The driver said, yeah, I bet he told you I was speeding too. <laughs> All right, and this, this is my, my last one, I think. Uh, It's fine to eat a test grape in the produce section, but you take one bite out of a rotisserie chicken and it's all, hey, get out of (laughs) here. Any any other volunteers? I have a very serious question this morning. I need to know, is hell hot or cold? After that test I gave the PCAM class last week, I'm sure many people are expecting me to go to hell, and I need to know how to pack. (laughs) Now, when I was growing up, it was kind of confusing, because when the my uncles would sit around the dinner table discussing the weather, weather in January when it was a nice, cool, toasty five below. And they would say, how's the weather outside? They'd say, it's cold as hell. <laughs> well, when those same uncles were sitting around the dinner table in July, when it was about 95 outside, And they asked, how's the weather outside? They said, it's hot as hell. Is it any wonder I'm confused? (laughs) Now, being a scientist, I decided to study this scientifically. And so the first thing I explored was politics. And I found that there are many members of political parties who believe that members of the other party are going to hell. Maybe you know somebody like that. 
Well, I thought maybe politics wasn't the most reliable, so I decided I'd study some churches. And I found there are several churches who believe that if you don't believe like they, are, they do, you're going to hell. You know anybody like that? How many people you know belong to more than one of those churches? So I figured there's going to be a lot of company with me in hell. Because somebody someplace believes everybody in this room is going to hell. Now that leads to a serious question. We still haven't answered, is hell hot or cold? But since that exam was on thermodynamics, I decided I ought to study some thermodynamics and apply that to the problem. And so we started studying thermodynamics, and I realized that there is two possibilities. Possibility one, hell is unbounded. It extends forever. So as more and more people are pushed into hell, hell just keeps expanding. But assuming it's an adiabatic expansion, that means it just keeps getting colder and colder until all hell freezes over. But there is another possibility, and that is hell is confined. And so as you put more and more people into hell, more and more souls into hell, the pressure keeps going up, the temperature goes up with it as frictions and uh, conflicts occur, and the next thing you know, pressure builds up until all hell busts loose. Well, at this point, it's time to get serious because I've been to hell and I can guarantee hell is both. There's the hot hell of anger, jealousy, lust. But there's also the cold hell of loss and loneliness. What saves people from hell? Well, we all know the answer, Jesus Christ. But I can assure you that Jesus Christ is much more effective when he gets some help. And the help he needs to get is from you. Because when you see somebody going in hell, just one kind word means a whole lot. Thank you. We have some prayer requests. Please pray for Susan Lehman. She, she will have surgery this week. And also, uh, let's pray for peace in Ukraine and Palestine. Let us pray. Wonderful God. Thank you for bringing us together in this time of worship when we can have a fellowship and love. Oh Lord, and we also pray peace uh, to the nations, especially in those places where there is destruction and devastation, O oh Lord. We also ask for healing for those who are sick or not feeling well. Help us to show your love and compassion and bring hope to our communities, O Lord. Give us faith that can reach your blessings as we walk our journey with you. That faith that can move mountains and can conquer great things for your kingdom. Let us enjoy our Christian journey, and please, Lord, fill us with joy and laughter, 
Let us enjoy your goodness, Almighty God. And as we go to different places, be with us. Help us to be your faithful disciples. Please, Lord, bring a spiritual revival and let us be closer and closer to you. Thank you for your faithfulness and for the reminder that resurrection is good news, is joy, is laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now, let's pray the prayer of confession. God of empty tombs and resurrection, and we hesitate to speak of your hope. Forgive us and give us a voice. And we find it difficult to love another. Forgive us, give us a new compassion. And we want to stand with a higher mind. Forgive us, put us next to the poor and the oppressed. When we stay locked behind the fears and doubts, forgive us and send us out to share your grace. We cannot believe your word of new life. Forgive us and fill us with your joy. All may confess in silence. Christ comes into every shadow corner of our life with the light of Easter. Christ comes to feed us with peace. We may proclaim the good news. Christ has come offering us forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Amen. All are welcome to take part in Holy Communion. The risen Christ invites all who love him, earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another to join together in eating this holy meal. and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you almighty God creator of heaven and earth you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life when we turned away and our love failed your love remained steadfast you delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending
Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church, which has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood by your spirit make us one with Christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now let us pray together the words that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The cup of Christ poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Come eat and know that God is good.
Let us stand as we're able as we join together singing Lord of the Dance, hymn number 261. For the commissioning and benediction, let's sing hymn 2279, The Trees of the Field. Thank you. 
Lord, grant me a joyful heart and a holy sense of humor. Give us the gift of faith to meet and share with others this day. Teach us to cast aside worry and live for Christ. Go in laughter, go in grace, keep the Lord in your heart and a smile on your face. Next time they ask.